Oh, Rob's. I'm eating crackers and I'm going to do new book arrivals number one, I believe 88. It's mostly or at least half poetry. So let's get to this bullshit. Being here, poetry. Would you like a wheat thin, bruv? Being here, poetry, 1977 to 1980. By Robert Penn Warren. Who I must say, I don't really know all that much about him. What year is this book? Obviously, probably 1981-ish. Got a lot of books. Well, he had. Pretty damn sure he's dead. A random house. 1980. First edition. To Gabriel Thomas Penn. There is in short no absolute time standard. I thirst to know the power and nature of time. Shut up. October picnic long ago. Page three. Way too long. At cliff foot where great ledges thrust the cave debouches a soil level and rank where the stream ages back had come boiling forth and now from alluvial earth the last of old virgin forest trees rise to cliff height and at noon, twilight rains. No one comes. I must have been six when I first found the cave mouth under ledges, moss green, and moss green, the inner dark. Each summer I came and twilight peered in, crept further, till one summer all I could see was a gray blotch of light far behind. Honestly, it's not that bad. Yes, they need crackers. Captain James Cook. Not much a fan of the ocean, so. Was Cook a, a pirate or was he just an admiral? This is the definitive biography of Captain James Cook by the only other living today. What? By the only author living today. Pardon? Qualified to write it, Alan Valerius. Valerius is probably the best known and the last of the truly great deep water sailing shipmen. Earl Anthony Smith owned this. Maybe Cook, Captain Cook's the one that fought the pirates. Nineteen sixty seven. A print on the wall of the classroom at my school when I was a child in Melbourne showed a benevolent Captain Cook landing from HMS Endeavour at Botany Bay. He was restraining some of his men from firing at a handful of Aborigines who stood there in courageous and futile opposition with their spears and womeras. I liked the look of Captain Cook, so I read all I could of him. I liked what he had done and the way he did it. When I could, I went as an apprentice in Tasman. Sea box, a reasonable equivalent to the Whitby cats of the 18th century, offering remarkably similar training. All right, bro. Guess we didn't get an answer. Ellen Villiers has been sailing on, commanding, studying and writing about full rig ships nearly all his life. He was born in Melbourne, Australia, 1903. I got nothing about Captain Cook.
Junkie by William S. Burroughs. I'm pretty sure I have this book. Hopefully one of them is suitable for selling on thrift books. Thrift books or eBay. And then it's worth selling. Probably shouldn't be eating while I'm touching these dirty ass books. Let me finish these two. I probably shouldn't be eating while I'm making a video either, but. The Face Behind the Face, poems by Evgeny Yevtushenko. Translated by Arthur Boyers and Simon Franklin. I wasn't too happy about the fact that this book lays flat at its center. And it has a broken spine. Or at least a split spine. Yep, Tushenko has some, uh, is highly regarded by some. I'm sure not so much by others, but. for 50 cents and the fact that I was sort of in a rush at the thrift store since I was at work during a lull me and a co-worker went he's like Bob you're fucking crazy he's like you're damn right I am I'm getting some books Bubba and I found a percolator too Alice Walker, Revolutionary Petunias and Other Poems. Most poetry books are absolute rubbish. 1973. This one might actually be worth some money. Let's see some of these revolutionary petunias. Well, at least the spine is nice and uh, in place. God damn, I'm struggling with this. It's like a goddamn fish. I don't want to break the spine. He said, come. He said, come, let me exploit you. Somebody must do it. And wouldn't you prefer a brother? Come, show me your face, all scarred with tears. Unburden your heart before the opportunity passes away. That's nothing. Mysteries, your eyes are widely open flowers. Only their centers are darkly clenched to conceal mysteries that lure me to a keener blooming than I know. And promise the secret I must have. Well, we can safely say that Alice was a poet taster. And I'm still chewing these godforsaken crackers. And Sexton, live or die. It says 1966 Houghton Mifflin, but it also has an ISBN, so I assume it's from the 1970s. But the fact that there's no, um, I'm not sure what year Sexton killed herself, I would say early 70s probably. But I would assume she was still alive when this was published. To begin with, I have placed these poems in the order in which they were written with all due apologies for the fact that they read like a fever chart for a bad case of melancholy. But I thought the order of their creation might be of interest to some readers. And as Andre Gide wrote in his journal, 
Despite every resolution of optimism, melancholy occasionally wins out. Man has decidedly botched up the planet. Sexton was a good writer, but just overwrought. And it almost becomes cliche. After a while, it's the same same bullshit every time. But of course, that was basically how her life went, too, where she was cheating and sad and suicidal and all that. I'm sure she was being cheated on, too. I can't remember all the details, but... Sylvia's death. Oh, Sylvia, Sylvia, with a dead box of stones and spoons, with two children, two meteors, wandering loose in the tiny playroom, with your mouth into the sheet, into the roof beam, into the dumb prayer. Sylvia, Sylvia, where did you go after you wrote me from Devonshire about raising potatoes and keeping bees? What did you stand by? Just how did you lie down into... Thief, how did you crawl into, crawl down alone into the death I wanted so badly and for so long, the death we said we both outgrew? The one we wore on our skinny breasts, the one we talked of. So often each time we drowned, we downed three extra dry martinis in Boston. The death that talked of analysts and cures. The death that talked like brides with plots. The death we drank to. In motives, and then quiet. The, then the quiet deed. In Boston, the dying ride in cabs. Yes, death again. That ride home with our boy. Oh, Sylvia, I remember the sleepy drummer who beat on our eyes with an old story. How we wanted to let him come, like a sadist or a New York ferry, to do his job in necessity, a window in a wall or a crib. And since that time, he waited under our heart, our cupboard. And I see now that we store him up year after year, old suicides. And I know at the news of your old death, a terrible taste for it, like salt. And me, me too. And now, Sylvia, you again with death again, that ride home with our boy. And I say only with my arms stretched out into that stone place, what is your death but an old belonging? A mole that fell out of one of your poems, O oh friend. While the moon's bad and the king's gone and the queen's at her wits end, the barfly ought to sing. O oh, tiny mother, you too. O oh, funny duchess, O oh, blonde thing. February 17th, 1963. As you can see, it's just... I mean, it sounds okay if you've never heard a poem... But once you read it enough, you just say, this woman is a, she's not even a one-trick pony. She's a half Shetland pony. Half-trick Shetland pony. Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. Winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Oh, you son of a bitches. Make sure. Does that say make? Made sure Kara wanted to go. Well, that kind of sucks that this woman botched it up. I assume it's a woman that wrote this book. Well, that, um. Sort of dampens my enthusiasm for the fact that I found the first edition. A recent one at that. I don't know why I've been finding so many books by this guy lately, but this person ruined it all. Did promise I was going to stop eating these crackers. The Ends of the Earth, A Journey at the Dawn of the 21st Century by Robert D. Kaplan. Author of Bachlan Ghost. Or is it Bachlan?
I burned the shit out of the roof of my mouth and it really stings whenever I hit it with a fragment of this food. A journey at the dawn of the 21st century Robert D. Kaplan. 1996. In the ends of the earth, Robert D. Kaplan travels from the devastated countries of West Africa and the fundamentalist enclaves of Egypt and Iran to the culturally explosive lands of Central Asia, India, Pakistan, Pakistan, and Southeast Asia with hardly more than a notebook and a backpack. Is my damn washer done that quick? There's no way it's done that fast. It always stops for eight minutes and then comes back on. But I'm not hearing nothing. Continuing on with the poetry, Rob McEwen, who is the poetester of all time and to each season. Didn't you write Seasons in the Sun? I know he wrote that one song. If you go away on this summer day. Yeah, his poems are not very good. His lyrics were decent, though. Standing Street 4. There are those times when I'm not sure there ever was a house on Stanion Street. That house, just like that long-gone love, fades, too, sometimes. One doesn't think the photograph the now, to photograph the now when you're, you are convinced it lasts. But really was and is, and reality for some of us, is only those things done or thought done and well-remembered. On Sunday next, my painting was the best in class, and to this day, it's still the best one that I ever colored that Sunday. And afterward as well, I started t taking a different road to home, bypassing my favorite pond, not even going towards the fucking wash machine we go back on. Hey, we're saving energy. We shut it off for eight minutes. Home again, I pulled the shade and got down from the bureau, my Sunday school coloring book. Having chewed my brown Crayola just the day before, I had no choice but to color Jesus Christ's hair yellow. Yeah, for some reason his books still sell, though. And I collect them for that purpose. <clears throat> As both an amusement and an investment in... bad people's literature plus it's a hardcover yeah yeah I know I, I broadcast loud and clear my findings of J.D. Vance's Hillbilly Elegy but this is actually the UK edition so I was like, I can't leave this behind for 50 cents. Alex, congrats on going to Cincy. You will meet many of those, these folks do as patients. Hope you enjoy the book. Love, Graham Al. Obviously, Alex didn't particularly enjoy this book. Well, maybe he did until he realized that J.D. Vance was running... I've said I'm not a particular fan of J.D. Vance. But there you go. I prefer the bombast of a guy like, what was that guy? Ramaswamy. That guy was fucking pissed all the time when he was doing speeches. Victorian Mysteries. Mrs. Jeffries takes a second look.
an internet friend of mine loves Mrs. Jeffries and used to send me copies when they were more rare to sell. And I made some money off them, bruv. So we always have a special place for Mrs. Jeffries. Now these books are readily available, and I think most of them have been reissued and the value has dropped, but I still collect them. Not worth much, but still worth more than 50 cents. That's all, bro.